Hi everyone, Jack's still here. Welcome back to our course. Let's begin our lesson today. In this lesson, I will lead you to learn variables based on the code in the previous lesson. Go back to the previous lesson program. If you want to adjust the blinking speed of the LED, for example, to speed up the blinking speed of the onboard LED, how should you do it? Just change the parameters of the two delay functions to a smaller number. Then recompile and upload the code, and you will see the onboard LED blink faster. If you think it's still not fast enough or it's already too fast, in order to change its speed again, you need to change the code again and upload the code until you are satisfied with it. Each time you adjust the speed, you need to modify the parameters in both delay functions. Now that there are only two delay functions in the program, it's easy to modify the blink speed. But if you need to adjust the blink speed frequently, it will be a pain. Are there any convenient ways to modify LED on and off times together? There is. Use variables. So first, I want to introduce you to the concept of variables and programming. Variables are a programming tool that help you store and recall information in your program. Think of variables as boxes. You can put whatever you want inside or replace it later, and you will label it so you know what that box is being used for later on. After the variable is created, as long as you know its name, you can get the value inside. So, how do we use variables in this lesson? We first create a variable called delay time and then give it an initial value of 1000. When the delay function takes parameter, we let both delay functions read the value of the delay time variable. The value of delay time is 1000, so the LED blinks at an interval of 1000 milliseconds. Then if we want to speed up the flashing speed, we modify the value of the delay time variable. Correspondingly, the parameters of the two delay time functions will also change. In this way, we only need to modify the value of the delay time variable instead of modifying the values in the two delay functions separately. Back to the code. How to use variables? First of all, you need to declare the variable. Before the code, type int delay time an equal sign. 1000 and end with a semicolon. Literally or intuitively, you may be able to see that this statement defines a delay time variable and sets its value to 1000. However, you also need to figure out what this statement actually means. I will teach you how to look up the official Arduino documentation. Open your browser and type arduino.cc slash reference. To go to the Arduino documentation page, scroll down until you see the variables area. This is the area related to variables. Find the data type area and you will find int is in this area. Actually int is a type of variable and all these you see in this area are types of variables. Click on int. Next you can see the Arduino explanation of it. You can see that it says, Integers are your primary data type for number storage. Variables have types, and different types of variables store different types of information. For example, int here means integers, and the numbers we use every day that are without a decimal point are integers, such as minus 1, 3, 100, etc. And for example, minus 1.5, 3 quarters, and 3.14 are not integers. In addition to int, there are many other data types, which we will learn later in the course. Now you need to know two things. 1. There are different types of variables. 2. The int data type is used to store integer numbers. Looking down, you can see that variables of type int have a range, and for the NO board, the range of int is minus 32,768 to 32,767. Generally, we will not exceed this range, but remember that int is an infinite. Just like the box mentioned in the previous example, there is no such thing as an infinitely large box. Looking at the syntax item, here is the usage of int. You can see the syntax for declaring and assigning variables. 
First, int is to declare the data type of this variable and a variable name. Next, an e equals sign. In the Arduino programming language, it's also known as the assignment operator, and then the value you want to assign to the variable, and finally the semicolon. Back to the code. We declare a variable called delay time and assign it a value of 1000. When you see delay time, you may wonder, why such a variable name? Good question. There is basic knowledge that you should have. There are naming rules for variables, and violating those rules will cause errors. The general rules for naming variables are, names can contain letters, digits, and underscores, but cannot contain spaces or special characters, such as exclamation mark, pound sign, percent sign, etc. My pet one or my underscore pet are valid names. My, space, pet, my pet, exclamation mark, and my, pound sign, pet, are invalid names. And variable names must begin with a letter or an underscore, cannot begin with a number. Cat1 or underscore cat1 are valid names, and one cat is an invalid name. Third, names are case sensitive. My cat and my cat are different variables. At last, reserved words, such as int, cannot be used as names. In the Arduino programming language, some words are reserved for special purposes, which we call reserved words or keywords. Don't use them as variable names, such as int in this lesson, and most of the words you can see on the Arduino reference page. Normally, Arduino ID will highlight these words, such as int, but since Arduino ID 2 may have just been released, and some problems have not been fixed properly, so they are not highlighted. However, I believe Arduino will fix this problem later. When you see a highlighted word in Arduino, remember not to use them as variable names. In addition, I have some suggestions for you about naming variables. These suggestions are not mandatory, and the compiler will not report an error if you do not follow them. However, I strongly recommend that you follow them. 1. Make use of camel case, which is consistent with the Arduino programming style. Most Arduino libraries name variables and function this way. Camel case indicates the separation of words, with a single capitalized letter and the first word starting with either case. I recommend that if the variable consists of a single word, use all lowercase. If it consists of multiple words, capitalize the first letter of each word except for the first word. For example, my first name, my last name, and you will find that the variable names look like a camel's hump. Second, variable names should be short and descriptive. For example, for the variable used to store the LED blink interval time in this lesson, you'd better make its variable name relevant to what it does. If you name this variable cat, imagine the problems that will occur. For the Arduino ID and compiler, it is no problem, it can be compiled and run successfully without any errors. But when the program becomes complicated, you want to review the code again, or when showing your code to your friends. You see the variable cat, you will be confused and have no idea what it means. It is not convenient for you to maintain your code or for others to read it. While keeping variables descriptive, try to make them brief. For example, delay time may be better than time of delay. But at the same time, you have to ensure that you or others can understand the variable name. Compared to delay time, DT is to short. Back to code, remember what I said a few lessons ago. Please write reasonable comments on the code. When you declare a variable, you can also add a comment after it to describe it. Try to explain this variable so that you or others can easily understand this variable. Type slash slash the time interval between lead on and off. After creating variables, let's actually use them. You can get the value of a variable by using its name. Replace the parameter 500 in the two delay functions with delay time. Upload the code and see if the code works consistently. Oh, an error occurred. Compilation error. Delay time was not declared in this scope. 
On line 25 of the code, you have declared the delay time variable. What's going on? Let's take a look at the code again. It turns out that T is not capitalized when we use the variable. Remember what I said, variables are case sensitive. And in the computer's view, delay time and delay time are two different variables. Modify it and upload the code again. As you can see, the Wuno board behaves the same as before. The LED blinks every second. Now we can adjust its blinking speed much more easily. In the code, set the delay time value to a smaller value, such as 500, and upload the code again, and you can see that the LED blinks faster. At the front of the code, we assign the delay time variable to 500. When we use the variable delay time, it is equivalent to using 500. When you modify the value of this variable, every place where the variable is used will be modified simultaneously. This is one of the benefits of variables. You can adjust your program more easily. Additionally, variables have another advantage. They make your program easier to read. If you show your program to a friend, he might not know what to do. But you used reasonable variable names and wrote reasonable comments. After your simple explanation, he will soon understand that he only needs to adjust the value of the delay time variable to adjust the LED blinking effect. In this lesson we learned about variables. Now let's review key knowledge points about variables. Variables are a programming tool that helps you store and recall information in your program. Variables need to be declared before they can be used. The declaration of a variable includes variable type, variable name, assignment operator, and value. There are many different types of variables, and each type stores different data. Naming variables needs to follow certain rules. Names can contain letters, digits, and underscores. And variable names must begin with a letter or an underscore. Third, names are case sensitive. At last, reserved words, such as int, cannot be used as names. There are also some suggestions regarding variable naming. Use camel case. And variable names should be short and descriptive. In the next two videos, we will take it a step further and no longer use the onboard LED on the Wuno board. Instead, we will use another LED and build a circuit using the Wuno board and other electronic components. Therefore, before starting the next project, you will need to prepare one breadboard to 5 mm LEDs, two 200 ohm resistors, 100 to 300 ohms resistor will also work, and 10 male to male jumper wire. If you are unsure of what these terms mean, simply purchase them using their names and make sure the specifications match. If you have already purchased a SunFounder 3-in-1 kit, you do not need to purchase any additional electronic components as these are already included. The challenge for this lesson. Modify the program from this lesson to use the variables to control the on and off duration of the LED. See you at next lesson.